Okay, this is continuing in chapter two, fluid statics. In the previous video, I talked about the hydrostatic pressure distribution in a liquid and how the pressure increases linearly as you go deeper in the liquid. We're going to use that fact to make some pressure measurements. And so what we're going to talk about in this presentation is something called general manometry that makes use of columns of liquid to measure pressures. And I'm going to talk about three different devices. One's called a piezometer. Another one is called a YouTube manometer. Of course, that's a different kind of YouTube than you're used to. <laughs> and uh, inclined manometers. And the one thing I want to emphasize is you're going to need this skill. You're going to need to become comfortable with basic manometry analysis to calculate pressures because you're going to need it later on in the fluid flow part of the course in chapter three. Okay, as I mentioned, a manometer is a device that uses the height of a column of liquid to measure pressure differences. And the simplest type of manometer is called a piezometer tube here. I've shown over here on the right hand side. As so you can imagine, a, a pipe or a vessel here at point A, and you attach a, a vertical standpipe here, and the, the liquid in the pipe will rise up to a certain height, and that'll be a direct measure of the pressure in the pipe. And we learned from you know, the previous video that the pressure in a liquid, because the density is a constant, increases linearly, and it increases by the amount gamma H1 going from this point to point A. So the absolute pressure at point A is the atmospheric pressure at the open end of the tube plus uh, gamma H1, where P0 is the local atmospheric pressure. If you wanted to get the gauge pressure at point one, of course, the gauge pressure is the absolute pressure minus the local uh, atmospheric pressure, then the gauge pressure of point one would just be gamma one H one. Now there's some drawbacks with a piezometer. One of the problems is if you had a gas in this in this tube, you couldn't use a piezometer because the gas would escape out the uh, tube, which wouldn't be practical. Also, if you had a, a partial vacuum here, if you had a negative gauge pressure in here, even with a liquid, you'd end up drawing in air into the pipe, which is impractical. So piezometers are, are, have their limitations. To overcome those limitations, we use what's called a YouTube manometer. And I've shown a picture of, of a typical one. You're going to see a lot of them in this course. So here we have a pipe here, some pressure at point A. And as it sounds, we have a, a tube that makes a U shape. And then there's this gauge fluid. The pink fluid here is called the gauge fluid. It's a fluid of known density. And by measuring the deflection in the gauge fluid, we can determine the pressure difference between the ambient and the pressure is inside the pipe. And so you can use this if you had a gas in this pipe. Uh, it, it would isolate the pipe so you didn't suck gas into the, or, or expel gas from the pipe. And it allows you to measure negative gauge pressures because the, the deflection of the gauge fluid would just go in the other direction. Okay, so I'm just going to show a little example of an analysis. You really want to get comfortable with this. So let's suppose we're trying to find the gauge pressure at point A. And of course, we'd know the, the specific weight of the fluid in the pipe. And we'd know the specific weight of the gauge fluid. We have height H1, height H2. And this YouTube manometer is open to the ambient. And so presume we know the uh, local atmospheric pressure. So to do that, what you do is you work from uh, one side to the other. I'm going to work methodically here. So I'm going to work from point A, and then I'm going to, we're going to call that, that's height one. So if we move horizontally in this fluid, the pressure at A is the same as the pressure at one. And if we want to find the pressure at two, we know from the previous chapter that we're, if we're moving down in the fluid, the pressure at two is higher than the pressure at A by the amount gamma H1. And that's what we have over here is the pressure at two is the pressure at A plus, because we're going down in the fluid, plus gamma one H1. We'll call that equation one. Now, what we can do is, and this is one of the 
things you want to get comfortable with with the manometer is you can jump across in a manometer. Whenever you have the same fluid, in other words, whenever you're at the same depth in the same fluid, you can jump across. So the pressure at two is going to equal the pressure at three. Let me explain this a little bit more. So how do you know this is true? Well, if you actually went down and you calculated the pressure here, the pressure would, would increase by a certain amount because you're going deeper in the fluid. Then it would stay the same as you're moving horizontally. And then it would decrease by the exactly the same amount. So if you think about it for a moment, you can convince yourself that if you're in the same height in the same fluid, you can jump across from two to three. So the pressure at two here is, is the same as the pressure at this point, which we'll call point three. That's what I've written here. The pressure at two equals the pressure at three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from this end. So suppose we know this atmospheric pressure here and we want to find the pressure at three. Well, the pressure at three is going to be higher than the atmospheric pressure by the amount gamma H2. So we could write that down, that P3, the pressure at this point, working from this end is P0 plus gamma 2, uh, gamma 2 H2. So now, and we know that's equal to this pressure here, or this P2, which is equal to P2 equals P3. So it can equate equations 1 and 2. That's what I've done. That's equation the right-hand side of equation one and the right-hand side of equation two. And now we can solve for the gauge pressure at PA. Remember the gauge pressure, if PA is the absolute pressure, then PA minus P naught is the gauge pressure. So PA minus P naught, the gauge pressure at point A is gamma two H two minus gamma one H one. You can see that that's just a rearrangement of that expression. Now, if you happen to have a gas in this pipe, typically, I mean, it depends on the specific conditions, but say it was air traveling down that pipe. Typically, the specific weight of a gas is about three orders of magnitude less, about a th factor of a thousand times less than that of liquids. So it's very common to neglect the, pr the pressure drop or the, sorry, the pressure increase that you get going you know, over this height. So we can assume that gamma one is approximately equal to zero. So this term goes to zero. And we just get that the gauge pressure at PA is just gamma two H two. So that's a simple YouTube manometer analysis. And now I'm going to do a, a slightly more complicated one that's taken from your book. So again, so we're going to do an analysis. I'm going to do it all in symbolic form. We have a pipe here going into the page at A. We have a pipe over here at B, and we're trying to find the pressure difference PA minus PB. And this is kind of manufactured problem. It's a complicated manometer problem. Two fluid, two different fluids in the pipe. So there's a fluid in pipe A, gamma row one, and a fluid in, in this pipe B, gamma, row four. And then we have two different gauge fluids here. So it's kind of manufactured. You wouldn't run into something like this very often in practice. But if you can solve something that's this complex, then you should have no trouble uh, with more straightforward ones that you'll need for chapter three. So as I point out, we have fluids with four different densities. So gamma, row one, here we have a gauge fluid here, row two, another gauge fluid here, row three, and then the fluid that's in pipe B, which is row four. Notice that Z is measured upwards, so Z is the Z coordinate. I'm going to start at point A and I'm going to work my way over to point B. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start at point A and I'm going to move down to get to point one here. So the pressure at point one is going to be higher than the pressure at A by the by this height times gamma one. So we can write that the pressure at one is the pressure at A plus the gamma of the fluid and then the height. That's the height. So Z A minus Z one is is the 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 height of this column, so how deep you go. Now, we can jump across. We talked about this before. We can jump across and we can say that this is 
also the pressure at one. Now, why can you jump across? Well, you're at the same height in the same fluid. You're in the same gauge fluid. So the pressure would go go up, going to here, and it'd stay constant, and then it'd go, uh, go down by the same amount. So you're the same depth in the same fluid. You can jump across. So this becomes our point one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to point two here. And so what do we expect the pressure? Do we expect the pressure to go down or go up? Okay, we're going we're going to shallower depths, right? We're going up in the fluid, so the pressure is going to go down. So we expect a minus, expect the pressure to go down. So that's why we have this, this minus sign here. And it's going to go down by the amount gamma of this fluid, which is gamma 2, and then the height, which is Z2 minus Z1. So that's what we have here. And so that's the pressure. When we subtract that off, the expression we had, that's the pressure at point two. Now again, we can jump across here. We can say that the pressure at point two is the same as the pressure at that point. Because we're at the same depth in the same fluid. Now we're going to move down. So we're moving down deeper into this fluid, which has a density of rho three. So the pressure is going to go up. So we're going to have to add to this a plus gamma three times the height difference, Z two minus Z three. And so now we're at, that's the pressure at point three here. And again, we can jump across same height in the same fluid so we can jump across to this point so that's the same pressure at point three over here and now we can go we're going up so the pressure is going to go down because we're going into shallower fluid it's going to go down by amount gamma four so rho four g times the height here so that's going to be z b minus z three so the next term Okay, so all of that was equal to P3. And so the next term, gamma 4, Zb minus Z3, and we can set all of that equal to the pressure at pipe B. So now we can just rearrange that expression for PA minus PB, which is what we're after. And that's what I've done here. You can check my, my algebra. that I've just rearranged that expression. And these are just uh, the heights. So these are the delta Zs here are just the actual positive heights between uh, the different segments of the pipe. I strongly recommend that you always work in symbolic form and substitute the numbers after. From here, substituting the numbers is uh, very straightforward. So you might wonder, is PA minus PB a gauge pressure? Think about this for a minute. Pause the video and, and give it a thought. What do you think? Is, that, is PA minus PB a gauge pressure? The answer is no, it's just a pressure difference. And if you think about it, you know, if you added the ambient, local ambient pressure to uh, PA minus PB, you wouldn't get a meaningful absolute pressure. So it's just, it's just a pressure difference between PA and PB. It's not a gauge pressure. Another common device that you're going to encounter is the incline manometer. Uh, it's basically just a YouTube manometer, but a portion of the tube has been inclined to stretch out the deflection of the, you know, the height of the fluid over a longer length to increase the sensitivity of the instrument. So it allows for measuring smaller pressure differences. So I'm going to do completely in symbolic form again, the analysis of this inclined YouTube manometer that you see here. And so in this problem, we have pipe A over here and pipe B, and we're after PA minus PB again, and we have three different fluids. We have the, the fluid in pipe A, the gauge fluid that's in this inclined section, and the fluid in pipe B, which we'll call gamma three. So I'm going to work again from, from working from A to B. So I'm going to find the pressure at point one here, and it's going to be higher than the pressure at, at point A 
by the amount gamma 1 times H1. So the pressure at 1 here is equal to Pa plus gamma 1 H1. So now we're, we're at this point. Again, we can jump across and get the pressure here. We're at the same height and the same fluid. That's also equal to the pressure at 1. And now I want to move up this inclined section. And when I'm moving up the inclined section, we're moving into shallower fluids. So the pressure is going to go down, and it's going to go down by gamma of the gauge fluid times this height. So it's going to be gamma 2, and that, that height is L2 sine theta. And you're going to have a negative sign here because you're moving up and the pressure is going down. This whole expression here is equal to the pressure at point 2. So now we've got the pressure at point 2 right here. Now we want to move up to get the pressure at pipe B, and it's going to be going, uh, the, the pressure is going to be going down by the amount gamma 3 H3, so if we're moving into shallower fluid. So it's going to be minus gamma 3 H3. And all of that we can set equal to uh, the pressure in pipe B. So now we just do a little rearranging, solve for PA minus PB. And you can check my algebra is correct. There's the expression for PA minus PB. And of course, for, you would typically know the specific weights of the fluids in the pipes and the heights. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward calculation from this point on. I'll, I'll leave you to do the numerical examples in the chapter problem sets. Now, if you happen to have gas in both of these pipes, which is a common situation, you might have a air or, or some other gas flowing in these pipes, the density of gases are often very, very small, uh, unless they're super high pressures. They're relatively small, and we can neglect the, the specific weights of gases. And so this term and this term go away, and you just get that the, the pressure difference, Pa minus B, Pb, is gamma 2, which is the gauge fluid uh, specific weight, times the length of the deflection of the gauge fluid and the sine of the inclination angle. I should point out that uh, several manufacturers make these commercial inclined manometers. Dwyer is one of them. And you're going to be using an inclined manometer in lab number two, the lab involving the measurement of uh, pressure drop in a pipe for laminar and turbulent flow. By inclining the column of water, you stretch out that height over a longer distance. And you can see here's the scale that's, that's used to measure the the deflection at a given angle. And so low inclination angles and uh, a light oil gauge fluid increases the sensitivity to measure relatively small pressure differences. So the next video is a numerical example of the YouTube manometer shown here, uh, where you're calculating, again, the pressure difference PA minus PB. It's actually a numerical example, so have a look at that example. It actually comes from a past midterm, so it's a midterm caliber question. As I mentioned, you want to get really comfortable with manometry, with calculating pressure differences using YouTube manometers, because we're going to assume that you know how to do this. In chapter three, we're going to have a situation uh, like shown in here, where we have flow in a pipe, a flow of water in a pipe, and the, it's called a venturi flow meter where the the pipe narrows a bit that causes reduction in pressure and it uh, you can measure the pressure difference using a YouTube manometer and from that you can obtain the flow rate in the pipe so I really encourage you to, to get comfortable with uh, calculating pressure differences using manometers and that completes this presentation